uh, Gareth, I just want to uh, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, really cool uh, fight uh, in the bar with uh, Elliot and the, let's call them the, the goons. Uh, can you just, you're known obviously for the raid and just, you know, incredible uh, fight choreography and any project that you're doing. So can you walk us through uh, this fight uh, with uh, Elliot's character going to the bar and how you, you wrote that and developed it and j j just the whole process behind it? Yeah, so, um, I mean, basically, when it comes to the writing of it, usually it's very kind of thin on the page. We, I don't really tend to put that much detail in when it comes to the scripting of a fight sequence because the truth of it is the actual details of a fight, they get found when you're in a room with a bunch of talented stunt coordinators and fighters who know what they're doing as opposed to me who can just look at something and just have a sense of if something looks nice or if the rhythms are cool. Um, and so, so basically, when it came to the, the script, I kept it quite simple, I kept it quite basic. I kept it quite to the point where it was, um, I knew that I wanted Elliot to be, at this point, getting up off the floor, dusting himself off after being sucker punched. And then for him to be, you know, now driven to want to capture this guy, best man. And, and, and so, I think in the script, we kind of mentioned things about it, like the, he's almost like a shark, that, he, that he, he never takes a step back. It's always a step forward, no matter who comes at him. And we, we you know, mentioned the script that is like a wall of people in the way. And, and so on the, on the page, it actually, it, it's over in about like half a page, you know what I mean? Which if you were going by the sort of traditional method of, oh, it's a page a minute, doesn't quite cut it when it comes to action sequences. And so, you know, two or three paragraphs of, of oh, it's blister and mayhem and chaos and stuff inside the pub. Um, then that gets taken into, you know, me in a, in a, in a room with boxes and crash mats and then incredibly talented stunt performers uh, and then uh, Drew Poyer, my stunt coordinator and Chris Webb, his assistant and, and the three of the, you know, the three of us would sort of discuss first the, the the tone of the scene and so I would have said to him back then when we were discussing this I said look this this is the first time we'll have seen like a proper fight in this this show um, I want it to feel fun I want it to be like a roller coaster I wanted to have a knockabout style to it and so then, you know, that kind of like sets the tone then going forward. So we know then the kind of the rhythms that we're going for. And then, you know, I think I discussed with him, you know, because the show is Gangs of London and there's a certain expectation from the audiences going in. And we knew that myself and Matt Flannery, the co creator of the show, we knew we wanted to subvert some of the expectations of like, you know, it's not going to be about cockney gangsters. It's not going to be the typical East End sort of gangster stuff that we've all seen like a hundred times over now in the last 20, 30 plus years. Um, I said, but when it comes to the first fight, we should tackle that head on by actually setting it in a London pub. So we should go like full on into that, that sort of genre trope, but do the version that we would do, do the version that makes it different from everything else that's come before. And so we looked at, you know, what kind of weapons we can use. And I was like, well, you know, there might be guys playing darts. So maybe let's use a playing dart as a weapon. Um, you know, uh, there's a big thick ashtray on the table. Um, you know, forget about the non-smoking laws. Let's pretend like, you know, there's a bunch of gangsters in the in a pub and a funeral. They're going to be smoking. So there's definitely an ashtray there. Um, and so it was, you know, looking at all those different things and then finding different ways to use it. And so I, I, I kind of like talk to the stunt team. They'll go off then and I'll leave them to it for about two or three hours. Um, and then me and Matt would be, you know, working on other stuff, whether it was shot listing or, or at that point, probably still like casting process in the show. Because we do this fight prep pretty early on in the preparation of it. We do it maybe like before we start heavy pre-production. And so then I check in with them two or three hours later and then they just present to me these wonderful myriad different ways that they can hurt people. <laughs> and then, you know, it's about figuring out, oh, well, this is the structure of this sequence. This is how this is going to work and this is how that's going to work. Um, and, and, and just going from then and after about a day or two, we've got the shape of the fight. Um, and then after that second day, then we start working, uh, figuring out all the shots and all the edits of the sequence itself. Then, Yeah. When Chope Derishu signed on, did he know what he was getting into? I mean, did he, had he seen the raid? He's like, Hey man, you're gonna have to do some, some work, you know, with, with this project. <laughs> he, he, he knew, he knew what we were doing. Um, and, and so he knew, he knew a bit of my work before then. So I think he'd seen the raid in raid two. Um, but part of his audition process involved a fight test because we knew that that character was going to be so important in terms of the physicality. And so when he came in and did his audition, um, part of his audition was then going off with Chris Webb, who was you know, part of Jude's stunt team 
and then being assessed as a fighter. You know, and then you know, because you know, Chris would be looking at him for like, you know, okay, how how quickly does he move? What's his flexibility like? Can he turn his hips much? You know, what's what's his what's his grounding and his feet like? You know, is he going to be stiff or not? You know, we and we look for all of those different things because it might mean readjusting and recalibrating some of the choreography. It might just mean, well, it's the same choreography, but let's change the camera angle because we're going to need a fight double for that piece of choreography. Once Chris did his assessment of him. I was in the middle of a meeting with all the execs and then some of the guys from Sky TV at the time. And Chris just comes <laughs> coming down the stairs and starts knocking on the door to tell me, yeah, he's really great. He's really good. And I was like, thank you, Chris. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. We'll chat again. Um, everyone was super excited for him because he was just like, oh my God, this guy's like lightning in a, in a bottle. You know, he's like, he's, he was just, he, he just had everything. So we were getting dramatic performances out of him. We were getting him improv in lines and, and bringing humor and, and, you know, levity to the character as well. But um, he had this unbelievable sort of like undeniable charism, charismatic presence about him. Like he's like an old school movie classic sort of like, you know, appeal to him. But then, you know, when it came to the fights, he was just roughing it up with the rest of them. And, you know, there were moments when we were shooting, especially during the, 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 the meat cleaver fight at the end of the, uh, end of the first step. You know, there were moments when we were filming those sequences where I stopped treating him like an actor and I started treating him like a fighter. And I'd be like, you know, yeah, come on, let's go one more, one more. Come on, let's do it again. Pick up your energy. And he was going for it. He'd be 100% with it. So, yeah, he, he was special, really special. Ah, cool, cool. Ah, cool, cool. Ah, cool.